Je luistert naar het tweede gedeelte van een gesprek dat ik, Frans Pollux, samen met vriend Miel Theeuwe had met een Canadese uitvinder, Thane Heinz, die beweert een apparaat te hebben gebouwd dat alle, ja, alle wetten van de natuur kunnen tacht en een soort van oneindige bron van energie is, in ieder geval hele rare dingen doet. Zijn volledige verhaal over hoe hij tot die ontdekking komt en wat hij met die ontdekking gedaan heeft en wanneer we het misschien op de markt kunnen gaan zien, uh, is te horen hier op YouTube. Dit is deel 2. Deel 1 is er ook. We zitten op een terrasje van de Starbucks, ergens in de buurt van Wendover. En we stappen in het gesprek als Thane Heinz net heeft uitgelegd hoe die eigenlijk per ongeluk dat rare apparaat van hem heeft ontdekt. At that point you still had you didn't have the explanation of how the physical workings how, how it actually work and and then you proceeded to figure that out by yeah. doing experiments yeah. with your business partner. So so the two of well, you were uh Luke I think Luke left Luke stayed at AutoU for a year and then it was basically I I had to figure everything out by yourself on, on my own yeah so you were back back to your cellar and doing it on your own well full time by this, by this time i had a two-car garage <laughs> with a lab in it and heated garage and that's where you see the electric bike video and so i yeah so i had to um i mean i had to go back to read everything and uh, you know understand uh And you were able to put the story together that you were just explaining to us about impedance and uh, what is that? Parasitic capacitance, yeah. And time delays and frequencies, and yeah. you, you figured it out. Yeah. Can I get to the out of the theoretics and to the human story? Because the million dollar question for journalists or artists coming here is if you invented this and it works and you know why it works and you can build it, then why isn't it in your car? Which is. The obvious question. It will be. And, wh and why isn't it yet? Is that because the prototype is not? You, you need uh, like um, serial manufacturing to to get it working, or is what's the I catch? I don't know. Can you call God on your cell phone and ask him? Because I don't have his number. <laughs> I don't either, and he's not telling me. So I don't know why. I don't know why, but I. Actually, I do know why. It's very simple. Um, have you heard of Stanley Meyer? No. Stanley so. Meyer, the guy that made the car that ran on water? No. Have you heard of uh, Dr. Diesel? He made a car that worked on diesel? He, he, made a, he, made, he made tractors that ran on vegetable oil. Ah. Okay? You've heard of people using French fryer oil in their Volkswagens. Okay, so Dr. Diesel, Dr. Diesel invented the diesel engine to run on vegetable oil. So farmers could uh, grow their own fuel. Okay, like pretty significant. Grow their own fuel and power their own tractors. Like, give me a break. That's like pretty awesome. And so Dr. Diesel went to uh, a, a convention in Paris and he won every award that you could imagine. And while he was going across the English Channel in, with his diesel engine, blah, 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 and all his awards, somebody pulled him out of bed, slit his throat, and threw him into the English Canal. And then his diesel, vegetable oil diesel engine was converted into a fossil fuel diesel right. engine. So now we're buying diesel instead of growing diesel. And Stanley Meyer... So, but just a moment, this is the reason why we don't have uh, this thing you invented in our it. cars. But it. why isn't it in your I'm, own car? I'm getting to it. I'm getting to it. So... Stanley Meyer built a car where you put water in the gas tank and then he made a special spark plug that split the hydrogen 
the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, which you burn. And he made a car that you could, you could run on water. And he drove it across the United States. And it's surprising that you don't know about it. So Stanley Meyer was murdered because of his invention. So let's say, just for argument's sake, that the universe doesn't want me to get murdered. Then the universe won't give me enough money to build something for my car or whatever, whatever, whatever. It will give me enough money to do the to do the necessary research to define the physics, okay? To define the physics so that I can go to somebody from the Netherlands or Holland that cares about Dr. Osted's discovery in 1820. So the and a lot of people ask me, you know, um, the same question. How, when is it going to be ready? When am I, da, 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 da. And I say, well, it's not up to me. It's up, it's up to the universe. The, the, I don't. But, but the reason it's not ready for putting it into a car is that it's, well, not, I don't know, not working 100% or no, it's too expensive to build no, a no, thing that fits into no. a car? The first, so the, the first part was, we had to get the backing theory developed. That's the first part. Then the second part is we have to have a commercially viable coil. Okay, you can't, you can't, you can't. Um, That's logis. Yeah. No, well, I mean, if you have something that works, whatever it is, to make it commercially viable, you need to industrialize it, right? Yeah. Yeah. You so need to scale it up. You need bigger facilities. Yeah. You need, yeah. You need so to bring the cost down. Well, no, you have to make it so it resembles a conventional coil. For example, the first uh, Regen X coil was 300, no, 150 ohms DC resistance. Okay, the Dutch guys, his is 300 ohms. So that's a very high DC resistance coil. Okay, and you can't generate. You can't generate electricity with that coil. You can produce acceleration, but you can't generate much electricity because the electricity is consumed by the resistance of the winding, okay? So it took us until, and I say it, when I say us, I mean me and my investors. It took us until 2018 to um, get a commercially manufactured Regenx generator coil from 150 ohms down to 0.4 ohms, okay, 0.4 ohms. That was a very, very long and arduous uh, intellectual property iteration process. Want minder ohms, dan levert hij meer op en dan kan die daarmee iets bewegen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now, now we have commercially manufactured right. coils that are less than an ohm of resistance. So now they're commercially viable. Right. Now you can now you can put that into a into a EV or this, this you could have done this faster if no, people would have no, supported you no, with more money no, or research? No, no. Okay. Can you... Okay. I'm going to hold a gun to your head. Right. Okay, Mr. Songwriter. Right. And you're going to write me the best song in the history of the world in 10 minutes. Okay, you ready? Go. No, it doesn't happen that way. But if I say, can you write me the best song in the history of the world? You might say... I'll try. I... Th I I probably could, but you're going to have to open yourself up to inspiration and so on and so on, right? And you're going, your life experiences from that point on are going to 
they're going to be the basis for the song, right? So you're going to start out with a, an objective and you're good and there's a certain amount of incubation period that needs to happen to produce that whatever it is and you're not in control of that but when you have it you're going to know and then once like i said inside once you have it and you create it you're going to try to put it out in the world and the world's going to say oh you know i love that song or i hate that song or or all right. That so, guy's a bad guy, or whatever, whatever. I, I'm, I think I might mis misunderstand you, or have misunderstood you. So I thought you meant with the story of Mr. Diesel that while you were not murdered, you were being opposed by no. Okay. No. 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 I have never been opposed oh. by anyone. I have been slandered and treated not well but then again anybody that starts a company that does innovation I mean if you know the story about so, so the reason why it's not there yet it's not because you're we're being opposed it's it's because it just takes time that's what yeah. you're saying now yeah okay. yeah it All takes right. every it took the Wright brothers 10 years before their airplane got off the literally got off the ground Alexander Graham Bell, same thing. Uh, Henry Ford, same thing. Ten years is the minimum. Ten years is the usually the incubation period for an innovation. And our intellectual... So, my company develops intellectual property. Okay? So, we have a dozen now. And the Regenx generator and the Regenx motor those are only a couple of many so while while I'm waiting for the next inspiration to say hey change this on your coil and change that and it it often happens in a dream where you wake up and you go oh I have to I have to do this and then you go and you do that and 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 you try this and you try that That's but, but still, you were um, referring to the diesel story, and it okay. So, <clears throat> inventors, and this goes back to those guys who don't want to talk to you, and it was the Yoss guy yeah. from uh, yeah. just these these guys who. So, what I so now that we have now we have the physics explanation we have the commercially manufactured product right. we have the patent we're filing new patents get, we're get going now we're, yes and we are right. and as i mentioned to you inside we have two car companies that we're talking to right now i can't say anything more than that but one of them is very big right. and I'm writing to... And you've never been at this point in the history of your research. This is... You're, you're on, the, on the top of the hill now. This is the natural progression of how it's going to go. And... Um, If you're cold, we can go inside. For no, no, it's okay. Um, I mean, Google knows about it. I mean, uh, I'm introducing it to Fisker. Fisker's going bankrupt. Lucid's going bankrupt. Rivian's going bankrupt. Even Tesla is having trouble. So uh, the the EV model, the existing EV model, doesn't work. It, it, you know, we were talking about Mr. Diesel and the others, and you were saying it just took me time to get to this point. Yes. But 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 what is it? How does it connect the diesel story? Or it it's getting to this point. Could this be a risk for you, or are you afraid of the no, industry? No, because my my priority is to rewrite the laws of physics. To get this story out. To rewrite the laws of physics, not to correct the existing laws of physics. To go back to 1820 and say, you know, the guy 
Hans Christian Osted, what he did in 1820, we should revisit because he's the guy that made the most significant discovery. But the because everything was in the newborn stage, uh, people were not able to appreciate what he did. Now let's let me show you what he did. Okay. I wonder if this will work. You have a compass. This, this is aluminum. Okay. We, we need wood. Invented by Ørsted, by the way. Alum is... Aluminum. Really? Okay, I, there you go. I googled this guy. Yeah. And one of the things on, you know, in, in one of his achievements yeah. is inventing aluminum. Okay. <laughs> Anyhow. So nice here thing. we are with a compass needle. Yes. Now, can you please move that compass needle without using energy? No. <laughs> you can't. You can't. You can't. Okay, turn that. Yeah, <coughs> just wait. You don't have to turn it yet. Hopefully it'll work. Try it now. Maybe it's... Wait. Yeah, Stop. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Okay, do it again. It moves, yeah. Okay. So this is that was his experiment, right? So what happens now is the electromotor uh, uh, runs a current. Yeah. So so I think what he discovered is if you have a wire and a current is going through it, and you hold a compass Close needle to besides to it, then the compass needle starts moving. So you can magnetic, induce the magnetic movement. Field, the, mag the magnetic field energy. This is the key thing. The magnetic field energy around the current bearing wire is going to increase the kinetic energy of the compass needle. Right now the kinetic energy of the compass needle is zero. Right. Okay? Now Newton's first law says and the law of conservation of energy and the first law of thermodynamics they all say the same thing. If you want to change the kinetic energy of this compass needle, you need energy. So, if we're doing, if we're changing, I think there's a problem with this table, but if we're changing the kinetic energy of the compass needle, And we're using the electromagnetic field energy, then where is that energy coming from? And this is the this is Osted's discovery that just gone unrewarded. Want waar zou die energie vandaan komen in de klassieke? Ja, zoals ik zoals ik het zou zeggen, denk ik, is er gaat een stroompje lopen door die draad. Hè? Je, je stopt met een stopcontact, maar niet uit. Er loopt een stroom door die draad. Doordat er een stroom door die draad loopt, bestaat er een magnetisch veld om die draad. En het kompasnaaltje heeft ook zelf een magnetisch veld. Ja. Dus op het moment dat je geen stroom door die draad hebt lopen, dan ligt die kompas daar gewoon. Maar op het moment dat je er een stroompje doorheen laat lopen, ontstaat er een, een, een magnetisch veld rond die draad. En die twee magnetische velden interacteren met elkaar. En, die die... en wat daar dan aan kracht vrijkomt, daarmee kun je een, want dit is een ijzeren naaldje dan, ja. die kun je dan laten, dat is de kinetische energie. Ja, dus de, de, volgens mij is het magnetisch veld om de, om de draad, dat gaat um, dat de richting van het magnetisch veld bepalen of beïnvloeden van de, van de kompas. En dat is ook hoe die kompas zich richt op het magnetisch veld van de aarde. Zo. So. Are you done? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> so, Osted discovered the law of creation of energy in 1820. And that is a new law that people don't know. That's, that's the new law that I formulated based on the positive work. Because you, ha you have to identify the energy source that's making our system accelerate, well, it's the law of creation of energy. 
But, but I didn't discover it. This is why you motherfuckers are here to take this message back to your country and say, get your head out of your asses. We have Einstein said energy and matter are interchangeable. Okay, there's everything is just energy in motion. Okay. There is no such thing as matter. It's just energy. Osted said energy can be created. That's his discovery. And it's it's a sin. Is, a yeah. very, very, very big sin. And I have written to many of your professors. And I've said... The kinetic energy change of the compass needle is equal to the work performed on the compass needle, which is equal to the energy required to perform the work. So energy comes out of nothing or out of the subatomic. Energy uh, is being created. Right. So and, and we had a professor of physics, uh, Mr. Kukuk, uh, and he uh, he told, you know, well, his main argument was this, energy can't be created. Yeah, it only can just, be tr transferred just, in another just, form. He's just... He's parody. He's not the only one. He's no, of course. That's what they have to say. Now, if now, if we said Now, it gets even worse for the physicists, okay? It gets even worse for them or the electrical engineers. Because Oested in 1820 built the world's first perpetual motion machine of the first kind. Are you there? Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, Do you it, know why? Tell me why. No, because uh, he showed there's negative work, etc. positive work, increasing the kinetic energy of the compass needle, not decreasing oh, it, yeah, okay, yeah. with... No external. No external. Source. Like, <laughs> where is it? He was using a battery. He was running... He, now, here's what they'll tell you. Okay, the physicists will tell you. They'll say, and it's very, this is where they're tricky. Okay, what they'll say is, oh, you need energy to create the magnetic field. Because if you don't have a battery, if you, or you don't, if you don't have current flowing in the winding, then you can't have a magnetic field. So you need energy to create the magnetic field. Which okay. was my point when I, when, when I said you have to turn it yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is not true. So... And you learned it's not true because at a certain point... No, no, no. It, no. <laughs> we're going to use... We're just going to apply Ohm's law and w Watt's power rule. Okay? Do you have a... Do you have an electric stove at home? Mm -hmm. When you turn it on, the element gets hot. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it takes energy, electrical energy, which gets converted to heat to make your stove work, okay? Right. So in Osted's experiment, the law of conservation of energy was being observed by the dual heating of the wire, okay? Watt's power rule, the, the voltage times the current, tells you how much energy is being how much electrical energy is being converted to heat energy okay yeah. it tells you exactly the number and the conversion is being performed at a hundred percent efficiency whatever heat is being created in the wire because there's nothing else going on whatever is being whatever electrical energy is being converted to heat energy it's being converted at 100% efficiency, okay. right? Now, so there's no room left to have kinetic energy. There's, there's no, again, your pockets are empty. You have no, no money left to, to pay for the energy to change the kinetic energy of the So when the science guy says, yeah, well, but you need energy to create a magnetic field, you say, but all this energy is uh, transferred to heat. You need energy, you need energy, to perform dual heating you can't you can't now here's the here's the kicker this is the smoking gun okay 
If these wires were superconducting wires with zero resistance, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. you're still going to move that magnet. Okay. But you have no electrical to heat There's conversion. no resistance. No, no resistance. Res and therefore, no heat. No heat, but you're still moving the magnet. At so the same rate or the same? The same, everything is the same. So it's not related to the heat uh, no. thing, to no. the energy but, thing. The but energy source is something else. A physicist who's been, uh, what do you call it? Brainwashed, you call it. <laughs> well, not or trained. Again, I was one of those guys. I was one of those guys. And, um, but what would they say? What if he was this uh, professor? What would he tell you now? Would he be baffled, or would he still have an argument against this? So what? What I'm trying to do, okay, and I've been trying to do it for a long time, is I'm trying. Electromagnetics, electricity and magnetism, what happened with Osted's discovery in 1820, the Newtonian mechanics guys saw it, okay, and they said, okay, Hans, good job, we'll take it from here. And then they took the electricity and magnetism subject and they put it under the umbrella of Newtonian mechanics. But Newtonian mechanics can't explain what's going on. At the subatomic level, you mean? Well, it can't explain the, the work that's being performed. Oh, that's what you mean, yeah. Like the, the, the negative work in a generator, the positive work here, especially in 2007 when we have positive work being performed <laughs> with created electromagnetic field energy. That that is that is the that lets the cat right out of the bag and you, you can't put it back in anymore so all the all the all they do is they ignore the cat which is now an elephant in the room it's not a cat anymore it's an elephant and what 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 i'm trying to do and i've literally been trying to do with dutch physicists is say, look, you guys have the greatest scientist in human history that's yet to be discovered. Well, he's Danish, you know, Copenhagen is in Denmark, but that's not that's not a problem. It's near Holland, so... Okay, you know, I don't no know. Problem, no problem, no problem. <laughs> but, Dutch, Danish, anyway. But, okay, Netherlands then. Yeah, we are Netherlands, but uh, Oostad is from uh, Denmark. Denmark. Copenhagen is in Denmark, oh. it's another country, but it's Europe. Never mind. Oh, yeah. You're right. Well, close enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For us, it's like Ottawa. Okay. Well, so okay. So I'm wrong there. Then. Are you now trying to turn this into an, into a commercially viable product? It is. But 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 is that is that a, a is that a goal for you, or is the goal to rewrite? The laws of physics, you and, and you don't care if it's you, no, it's going to. You have to rewrite the laws of physics first in order to explain to people what what's going on. Because yeah. I talked to one other inventor, and I, I asked him the question: Suppose Shell, the oil company, comes to you, says, "We'll give you ten million dollars for your idea, but we'll put it in a draw, and people will never heard." Of it. And he said, "I'll sign. I I do it. I do it. I, and you won't do it. No, no." Uh, no, Be again, the Wright brothers, when they created the airplane, they had to they had to write the 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 laws of aerodynamics. There weren't any laws. They had to they had to write the laws of aerodynamics. So the the best they could do was gliders at the time, and then the Wright brothers came along with their heavier than air vehicle. I mean, right, and they were pissing everybody off, especially the French guy, glider guys, who, because now the Wright brothers were creating a heavier than air vehicle. And um, even, even, imagine if we were in like, let's say 1700, and I came to you and I said, guys, I want to build a boat out of steel, okay? I've discovered 
the law of buoyancy and I've re figured out that we can make our boats out of steel. You'd be like, come on Thane, what are you smoking? But they used to make boats out of wood because wood floats. Oops. Now, in order to make a boat out of metal or concrete, you can make a boat out of concrete. Well, it'll still float because of the law of buoyancy. So as our, as our physics perspective grows, our knowledge grows and our, we advance. So what I'm trying to do with world phys physicists is I'm trying to go back to 1820 and say Osted discovered Osted not only I mean Osted discovered the law of creation of energy but he also discovered the law of conservation of energy he also discovered Ohm's law he discovered Watt's power rule all in his little experiment and the guy well okay he's Danish, but he's forgotten. Yeah, yeah so he created aluminum but what else my story also it go it's it's a personal story I, I'm, I'm telling I'm, I'm going into this story for two years now it cost me a lot of energy and maybe even my relationship in a certain way what has this venture no, cost you your relationship with Yas for sure <laughs> with Yas yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, okay. So, if you want to take a trip, okay, if I want to go to California, then I have to be willing to give up living in Ottawa to do that, right? So, in 2000 and 2001 right after 9-11 I took a trip and I said to myself I don't want to I don't want to buy I don't want to buy energy that's being paid for with the bloods the blood of soldiers and civilians in countries that have oil I want to I want to develop a peaceful energy alternative to oil that was my goal I had no idea how I was going to do it but that's what I wanted to do and um, in 2007 I discovered it I rediscovered it in in the acceleration of my generator and through my valuation and learning I realized that I didn't discover it at all. It was actually Osted that, that discovered it, but I discovered the same thing, but in a different format. And my discovery is such is such that it's um, undeniable and unavoidable, unavoidable. If you're if you're fortunate enough to come for a demo tomorrow, I'm going to show you an electric generator that generates electricity at infinite efficiency, which means infinite efficiency means um, if you're turning it at a certain speed yep. and connect it to a load and this doesn't change, your input doesn't change at all, stays the same. That's infinite efficiency, okay? That means, so if you're turning this at a steady state speed, you are, you're a drive shaft. At a steady state speed, the drive shaft is at what's called rotational equilibrium. And rotational equilibrium means that the torque and the, the torque in the drive shaft is zero the speed is whatever it is, but the power, the mechanical power, is the torque times the speed, okay? So if I keep this going at a steady state speed and I, the power in the drive shaft is zero watts, okay? Connect this to a load and it stays at that speed and torque, then 
the mechanical input is zero and the electrical output is whatever, okay? If this now accelerates, now I'm generating electricity at infinite efficiency and I'm performing mechanical work, increasing the kinetic energy of the generator and the, whatever's turning it. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm operating as a generator at infinite efficiency and as an electric motor at infinite efficiency. And then when you... But the first would already be great if it doesn't accelerate, but it, it, it stops... If it, if it didn't accelerate, that would be like... Or decelerate, that would be like colossal. Right, if it just keeps yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. That would be like... But it accelerates, it which is even... Yeah. yeah. Right. If we were... So... If we lived in a world that wasn't controlled by emotional people, silly people with, okay, then that you would know, you would have known about this in 2008 when we went to MIT. But there are, you know. Okay, so what, what did it cost you? I, I ask you, what, what did it cost you? It, it soaks up all your energy, I imagine. It's your life, it's your life's work in. And there are people who are not taking you seriously, so it must be hurting or it must be frustrating at while. I don't care. Did you lose friends or did you of lose? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, every friend, every relationship, just about. Yeah. You lost it because of this invention. No, because I'm a prick. You wouldn't be, but you wouldn't be the prick because if no, you didn't. I'm a prick. I'm a prick. I'm a total motherfucking prick. My 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 parents. My father was a, he's, deceased now, but he was a chemical engineer. And, he didn't, like the research that I was doing, and, my parents, said, okay, you know we're going to have to disown you because you're not a good son. Yeah. Because of this thing because that's right in front. Research. Yeah. But it, it happens over and over and over. It happened at Ottawa U. It happened at MIT. So... And did your wife leave you because of this thing in front? No. Yes and no. But eventually, when we got in, when we, when we went to MIT and when we got into Ottawa U and my father, chemical engineer, came to the lab and I said to him I said what's changed since you know when I was a bad guy a bad son and you had to disown me or whatever and now I'm a good son and you're bringing your friends to Ottawa you because you're so proud what's changed what what happened why why did you guys change your mind and my father said well we just realized that you're a you're a belligerent motherfucking prick and you're not gonna give up or change or whatever so we had to and that's basically it so so and was it worth it being a being a prick like well if again if i came to you and said okay i'm only going to do this interview if you stop playing the guitar or stop singing, or stop seeing your children. I know you have two daughters. So if, if, if I said that to you, you would say, piss off. You would say, there's no way, there's just no way. So- uh, People said that to you, stop playing guitar, stop, stop playing with the motor. This, stop doing this and- oh, You won't see your children again. Yeah, that yeah. actually happened, yeah. But, so when you go, when you go on a journey as an inventor, okay, it's not unlike a songwriter or an actor or a... It requires persistence and grit. And you have to commit. Right. You have to commit. Talk to any, any inventor, Steve Jobs or, or, or uh, Elon Musk who sleeps at the factory. If you don't commit 100, every ounce 
of your energy, you're not going to succeed. You have to put something of yourself in it. Well, you 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 have to the the universe requires that you commit, and the level of your commitment di dictates the level of your success. If you commit 20%, then that's going to be your return, and you're never going to get what you want. If you commit 100%, and that means you don't get an, a, you don't have a plan B, or you don't have an extra job, or you don't do those things, and you rely on the universe to bring you investors and so on and so on, and you, that's the way you live, then ultimately that's how you're rewarded. But if you, most people, they don't, they don't understand. You know, I, I, I was a high level chef. And one day I went to my girlfriend and I said, I'm quitting my job and I'm going to be an artist. And she was like, what? And I, I spent the next year producing my portfolio and then painting, painting. And, uh, the next year I was selling my art and doing art shows and making $10,000 a day or whatever and she was still your girlfriend or she yeah. oh yeah and then then I had an opportunity to buy a restaurant and I bought a restaurant and I almost went bankrupt after two and a half years and I didn't give up and eventually I had the restaurant for seven years and I was making lots of money but that's the way it works. Are you Commitment. worried that someone will 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 replicate this and walk away with Somebody this? Somebody already has. Lots of people have. But steal the idea and make it commercially val valuable and Some cutting you up. And famous with it, while nobody has ever heard of uh, Tain Heinz. Well, you said something interesting. You said you said uh, in one of your emails the ever omnipresent omnipresent yeah. where did that how did that come what well was that I, about? I found you because I, I just started googling the subject of yeah. uh, uh, these and I found your name everywhere these and crazy people doesn't want to say it no I well I stumbled upon crazy people yeah. in the in the uh, comment sections um, when you then there's an article or something about it and then you go into the comments and then it well we, you go down the rabbit hole yeah. but your name is turning up in yeah, in yeah. so many places yeah. that eventually, you you were the go-to guy. Eventually, eventually, it's it's a it's just a matter of time. Again, when Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, okay, this is imagine he's said, "Hey, Alexander, what are you doing?" He said, "Well, I'm working on a thing where I'm going to pass voice down a wire." A metal wire people would look at him like he's crazy like literally he must be crazy and in fact in he said in his memoir he said he was terrified that they would come and put him in a, in a straitjacket and take him to the insane asylum because what he was trying to do was so out there and um, luck and and so so he invented the telephone then he took it to the telegraph guy the owner of uh, Western Union or whatever it was at the time went in his office and put his telephone down on the guy's desk and he said I want you to I want you to use my telephone and the guy laughed at him and he said why would I be interested in this toy it's just a toy and Alexander Graham Bell walks out and he's like, okay, and puts the guy out of business, puts the telegraph out of business. So that's the... Um, so the question was, are you worried that someone will steal it? And, and you're, you're saying... Um, steal it if you want to. Like, look. <laughs> you must understand how close we are to nuclear war. 
we're like seconds away and much of that worry or much of that anguish is energy related am i out on a limb or do you no, agree, no, no, we agree. okay since I mentioned it, Japan got involved in World War II because the United States cut off their access to oil. So, so you're saying even if your ideas are, are being stolen, then it's for the better of the world and for yeah. the history of humankind. Yes, but are you worried that someone will try to hurt you in any way because of this? No. If you guys go back. Even though you're not, even though not from Denmark, <laughs> I learned something today. Uh, if you do your jobs and you sell the story or whatever, get the story out there, then once the physics are changed, you can't go back. So that's my primary thing right now is getting the physics changed, getting the physics corrected the you know there's the law of conservation of energy and there's the law of creation of energy and they can coexist together and um, when you come tomorrow, tomorrow I'm going to show you an electric motor that performs any magnitude of work with that much energy zero energy right zero external this on steroids but if the, your primary goal is to to change the laws of physics which you understand already that. done which I've already yeah, done yeah but 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 to make that known to the world yes if that is your primary goal are you in contact or you're trying to get in contact with with people that could do that for you with with the big universities or the established research i World? Yeah. It's a yes. Quantum leap for these people. So the problem is. So the problem is is that every physicist, every electrical engineer, every mechanical engineer, every engineer that is involved in electricity or motors or anything like that. They have to go back to school yeah. and they have to relearn everything which they don't want to do and also they ha the scientific community has to admit that it fucked up big time and it like is it's teaching fake science in universities the student but not willingly that's uh, that's where I I, I I not knowingly but some are I mean at Ottawa U okay Dr. Abash came to me and said Thane I have five third-year engineering students who are all gonna fail and he said I want them to replicate your generator and get them to write a report and you help them write a report and so on and so on so they the five guys came, they replicated the generator coil, they created a generator coil that accelerated under load, they wrote their report, and I helped them edit it and yada yada yada. They confirmed everything, data and everything, and they all passed. Okay, they all grad they all went to the they all got their whatever degrees. And while they were working, they said, how come we're not learning this in our class? If, and one guy said, this should be part of our curriculum. And I said, well, go talk to your professor and tell him to come for a demo. That was the guy on the fourth floor or the whatever, whatever, the two floors above me. And um, he wouldn't. He wouldn't budge. He wouldn't budge. Dit was het tweede deel van ons ongemonteerde gesprek met Thane Heinz, de Canadese uitvinder. Fragmenten van dit gesprek hoor je in de spannende podcastserie Het Apparaat. 
NPO Luister, Human en natuurlijk in je favoriete podcast app.